What's going on y'all, Jupiter Bassin. So I'm gonna do a little video for you guys today over uh, baits to use in May. Now May can be an awesome time for us here in Florida. You can just absolutely slam them because you're getting a lot of those fish that are done with the post spawn that are really feeding up and active for the summer. And then you can also still be caught in that post spawn where things can be tough, but you can also be rewarded with some good fish um, if you know how to get them. So um, that being said, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the forage. And the forage is going to be the main thing too. Um, regardless of the situation with the fish, the forage is going to be the biggest thing that you'll encounter and that's going to change the game really for you because those fish, whether they be in post spawn or starting to get into, you know, feeding in the summer and feeding it towards the end of spring, um, the forage is going to really help out a lot. So first off is going to be the shad spawn. We're heading towards the tail end of the shad spawn, but um, it's been going on for at least a few weeks now that I've seen some shad popping on banks and stuff, but um, I haven't been lucky enough to be in the right spot at the right time to go ahead and get some of those fish. So um, like I said, the shad spawn. So you're going to use some a lot of baits that are, um, you know, the wider... Um, just shad patterns um, and those are going to be really beneficial but we're more towards the end of that and I think the main focus for May is going to be focused on bluegill. Bluegill and any kind of like sunfish because those um, the bluegill slash sunfish spawn starts right around the end of this month or middle of this month usually is what I've noticed and then goes all the way on to like October but the peak of it, in my opinion, is the end of spring starting into summer. And we're going to go ahead and use that a lot on what baits we're going to use and what type of colors we're going to be using. So let's get into the soft plastic. So the first one I'm going to go ahead over is the Speedworm. Now, I absolutely love the Speedworm. It is a staple in Florida. Right here, I have a little green and blue. Um, some people call it Okeechobee, this one I believe is the Tahoe color, so it's a little half and half, like a blue shimmer flake and then like a watermelon green pumpkin on the other side. This is killer with bluegill. Bluegill have those colors of like, like your green pumpkin. They have a little bit of purple and a little blue shimmer to them. Very iridescent kind of scales that their color patterns change a lot in the water. Hey, how you doing, love? Mama? Let me whisper in your ear. But it's mostly, like I said, the oranges, a little bit of red, could be like red underneath, you know, the gills, um, you know, your greens, your blues, all of those colors really pop on a bluegill. And the bass see that, and there's no doubt that the colors you use whenever you're using soft plastics or even hard baits really show through. So, like I said, a speed worm, perfect color uh, for this is like a green and blue or a green and purple. Now, fishing this, the fish are going to be surrounded in a lot of like hydrilla, um, a lot of bluegill spawn underneath, um, or they'll be during the spawn, they'll be popping underneath like lily pads. Um, and with bluegill, they kind of like congregate up and large schools, and you know, they'll be popping on top of the water. And it's just pretty cool because, like, I've gone out in the Okeechobee, like, going in, like, the Rim Canal and stuff, and you'll just see, like, a huge, like, cloud of these little bluegill, and they'll all be popping on the top. Now, in this situation, like, running this speed worm, you can run this through the lily pads and hydrilla with, like, ease. And, like, the great thing that's versatile about this bait is you can either fish it, you know, down and just kind of drag it on the bottom or you can swim it, or you can really just run this thing on the top like a top water. The best thing that I absolutely love is lily pad fishing is running stuff across the top of the water, whether that be a frog, a swim bait, or say this little speed worm. Dude, the bites are incredible. So I would say this is my most versatile in the soft plastics and used the most here in Florida. So next, we're gonna go ahead into a little 10 and a half inch curly tail worm now this is my one of my favorite baits to use and um this is actually in green pumpkin magic which is definitely a good bluegill imitation bait now you can throw this in the grass um, you can run this along the bottom of shell bars you can fish it out deep which 
getting towards now in May, it is super hot here in Florida, especially in the middle of the day. So you're fishing deeper water and this ribbon tail gives off a nice action. It's a bigger style bait. So you're giving a bigger presentation for that fish to see. Um, just overall, I mean, if you told me I had to pick one, only one bait, it would be a hard press between either fishing, um, you know, going with the um, speed worm or fishing with this ribbon tail worm. I've caught so many big fish on a ribbon tail worm, it's crazy, especially the bigger ones. But, I mean, you could really use this in multiple situations, fishing it shallow or deep. And it's just a good presentation. Um, I don't really need to speak too much in depth about it because this is kind of a year-round bait. Always works. But um, I really like it this time of the year, especially getting into summer. Right now, I have the whale. And I believe this is in, like, this is a Six Sense Whale. And I think this color is called Ice Minnow or something ice, I think. But um, using this when there's shad present, being able to use, like, either, like, um, an underspin or just putting this on just a normal jig head and running it through the water is killer Especially like I said during the shad spawn if you can find those shad up on banks, you know um, You know spawning popping off basically You could throw pretty much anything in there But one of the baits that I would throw is a small little swim bait on a jig head or an underspin um, And this bait I would definitely use in either like a white or a shad kind of pattern like like maybe a black back with a white belly like a pro shad color or using it in like a green pumpkin green pumpkin red flake um uh their color for six senses um is it pumpkin juice or i think it's called green pumpkin juice or something like that uh, but those kind of colors where it's like a green pumpkin with blue flake or silver flake or whatnot is a really good color and like I said you can use these as a trailer if you go smaller on say like a spinner bait or a chatter bait whatever you want to do it's just a very versatile bait but like I said this thing can be lethal running it in shallow water or running it in grass using like an underspin or just a straight up jig head so that's the next bait next we'll get into and this color I guess this is the only one I really had on me, but this is a great year-round color, um, especially because here in Florida we have the shiners, um, the native shiners, and they're like a gold color with like a black back on it. Uh, but this is just a bitters. I believe this is the bitters. Um, what is the name of this? Mega Shad, I believe. Yeah. Bitter Bait's Mega Shad, and just any kind of fluke um, is ideal, especially, like I said, if the shads still are going... Running this weightless is probably the best bait you can use. Um, you know, you can cover all bodies of water if you let that thing sink down, or you can run it on top and just give it that darting action across the top is lethal. But I like to stick to green pumpkin if I'm trying to match a bluegill forage. Um, like I said, this gold works really well for me here because of shiners. And then you could use just a straight up white or pearl color. Uh, to mimic those shads and it's really easy to see on the water especially from far away but this is a super super versatile bait um you know you can rig it weighted or throw it just weightless which is what i like to do and uh for the ogs a lot of people like to use these as uh chatterbait trailers i used to use these as chatterbait trailers before they came out with a lot of the straight tail baits and these things actually work pretty good so the last one and there is so many brands and so many different one set uh, styles you can use. Um, but I really like this. I think this is one of the only, well, I wouldn't say only, but one of the best baits that I guess Guggen has come out with. And I think this is the one that if I had to choose any of their baits, this is the one that I definitely keep on me a lot. And that's going to be the Bandito Bug. Just any kind of creature bait, whether it be a crawl or um, a flipping style bait. Um, this time of the year, using this as either a jig trailer, throwing it on a heavy tungsten weight, or just putting it on the back of um, a chatter bait or anything like that's going to work. But um, just even throwing this just Texas rig is really good too. But as you can see the color, I have it in a purple and green pumpkin. And that is going to 100% mimic a bluegill. And the color pattern is really good this time of the year especially whenever you are 
punching or flipping. Um, and then I learned a tip. I was watching a video not too long ago, which I've done this before in the past, but whenever I'm fishing lily pads and you're bringing that thing up and you're hitting it on top of the lily pad and it punches like that, when bluegill are spawning and it just in general, when they're congregated underneath lily pads, they start to pop on the top of the lily pad and they're eating off like little bugs or mites or any kind of little minnows that are sitting up there and they pop off the top of those lily pads and um, it just by bringing this up and hitting it up against the top you're setting a um, a response or a natural reaction from the bass to strike that and um, I really like throwing this you know like up against cypress trees or any kind of cover wood cover especially because it's got that flat body. So when you hit some kind of branches or anything, that flat body kind of helps run it over the top instead of getting hung up. So that's really nice. But any kind of creature bait, you can flip in like a green pumpkin or you could even go white. But I tend to stick to green pumpkin or if it's darker water, uh, I'll go black and blue. And um, just a creature bait is very versatile. And in, in Florida pitching and flipping it into hydrilla or up in lily pads or any kind of grass is like a staple here. So that's going to do it for the soft plastics. I talked a good bit on those. Let's get into the hard baits. So I have five more hard baits. And um, the first one I'm going to start off with, first thing in the morning or late in the evening, I absolutely love throwing a hollow body frog. Now, this one is going to be more for like the shad spawn you got that white belly or a color that you're going to use in clear water and um i really like this i think this one is actually called shad spawn and this is the vega frog and um the popping style is key too because that popping action whenever you're having that pop on the water i don't believe i put it in my five but if you don't like using a popping frog you can 100 percent go with just a topwater popper. I absolutely love poppers this time of year, but this one is gonna be more versatile to me because you can throw this in cover and in open water. So the prop, popping frog is the first one. And then if you're in more of a, you know, middle of the day, sunny, um, you know, darker tannic water or milky water, you go in with this um, black color. And this is the Booyah Pad Crasher and a, I think it's called Smoky or a Little Smoky. Um, this color is really good, but that popping action, whether it be for bluegill or shad, you're mimicking that, and those bass are gonna come up to the top and they'll feed on that. So it's a really good bait this time of year. You can fish around lily pads, heavy grass, or like I said, in the open water. So next bait is going to be a jig like I absolutely love jig jigs and deeper points and drop-offs or up in cover whether it be woods um, cypress trees any kind of structure um, even on hard bottom um, fishing a jig is ideal and even whenever you get to those like um, bluegill spawning beds um, you see all those pits in the water and just running this slowly dragging it across the water is awesome so the colors i have here my two favorites i like to use this time of the year this is like a pb and j i believe it's a mullix jig but it is a pb and j so it's like a green pumpkin with a purple and red flake in it with a purple um, skirt on it as well this color is awesome and that would pair well actually with that um bandito bug that i showed you guys and then the next one is okeechobee crawl color and that is going to be a green pumpkin and blue. That is a really good color as well. Both of these are more mimicking a bluegill type pattern and work really well this time of year. The next bait I'm going to go ahead into to the last three. These are going to be my three favorite. And these are almost any time of the year, but they excel really well this time of the year. This one is going to be a spinner bait. Now, spinner bait, this is a bluegill pattern. I believe this is a Berkeley spinnerbait but um, as you can see keeping the pattern that I'm going with is a bluegill and I really like the gold blade like the gold willow blade works best for me silver or colored blades can work but 
I really like the gold blade and if you can get them with this as you see that front little blade right there this has a green pumpkin one if you switch this up and have it into like an orange or a chartreuse on the front you can get a lot of extra um, bites with that and like I said just spinner bait so versatile you can run it along edges of grass you can throw it you know in hydrilla try to run it along the top throwing in this through lily pads is amazing especially if you don't use a trailer hook you can really get this through a lot of lily pads and it works through you know pushing through that edge so this is an awesome bait to use and like i said it mimics you know either a shad or a bluegill so going with like a white white chartreuse or a bluegill color is going to be ideal for this bait and just slow roll it occasionally what i like to do is just pop it so it makes this little popping action through the water but i'll for the most part just slow roll it and then just hit it a pop here and there and usually i've noticed that pop sometimes triggers a lot of bites so going into the next bait has become my confidence bait and one of my favorite baits to fish with um, basically now all the time i'm i don't think there's a day where i usually don't try to at least throw this a little bit and that's going to be a jackhammer any kind of real chatter bait i really like the new the evos are really good i don't think they're as good as the jackhammer but for the price point i think it outweighs the jackhammer in that sense because i've noticed i still catch a lot of fish it's not as erratic and not as much of a hard thud from the blade but I've noticed though that the Evo does pretty well. But if you really, if you got the money and stuff, I would definitely go with the Jackhammer. So going back into it, this is a bluegill color. This is, I think, Brett's bluegill. Um, really good color. Got that orange and green into it and a little bit of a purple in the back. But chatterbaits, I absolutely love throwing in hydrilla grass right along the edges. And um, I, I haven't tried throwing it in lily pads, but I don't think it would work very well because of the way the chatterbait blade is. You're going to catch that blade right on the front of like a lily pad or the stems. So if you're throwing it in lily pads, make it more like small lily pads, like dollar weed or, you know, those tiny little, I don't know what the technical name for it is, but the tiny little lily pads on the top. I wouldn't throw this into thick lily pads. You'll probably lose your chatterbait real quick. But um, a chatterbait, like I said, very good lethal bait once again you're mimicking shad or a bluegill and that vibration gives off a lot of action for that fish to really want to strike it so chatterbait one of my one of my go-to's favorite baits and then last but not least this is my one of my favorite baits year round and this can be extremely extremely lethal this time of year with those fish being up shallow feeding um, you can cover a lot of water, cover a lot of ground, and you can fish this, you know, in grass, rip it through grass, or you can fish in open water, running this over, you know, uh, cover, shell bars, um, throw it close to wood, but I wouldn't throw it in the wood, but um, it is going to be a lipless crankbait. Right here, I have the red-eyed shad, and as you can see, once again, in a sunfish pattern. So... This bait is killer. Burn it. Just keep burning it and you will catch numbers. A lethal bait and you can change up depending on how the fish are. You can either go from like a rattle to like a one knocker. I know the other day I was really struggling getting bites with just a regular rattle and I put on the one knocker with it. I believe I was using the booyah and I caught like two or three fish instantly. So changing up the rattle because they hear that rattle a lot sometimes and like I said changing up to like a one knocker can kind of throw them off but that's usually what I do I'll go from my a regular rattle to a one knocker but some people like to do it with uh, no rattle so and then the other one is going to be another red-eyed shad but this is in a shad pattern and uh, definitely good for the shad spawn. And if you can get it deeper, usually those bigger fish are going to be deeper in that bait bowl. Um, the bass feeding on the shad, the, usually the bigger bass will be down at the bottom, kind of working those bait from the bottom up versus the smaller bass are going to be right in there working and hitting those fish towards the top. So I've caught at least 
two or three seven eight pounders so whenever i throw a bait ball or whenever i see a big shad spawn let that thing sink down a little bit and get towards the bottom and sometimes i don't even get to retrieve it yet that fish will hit it just doing that nonsense kind of wobble that like this whenever your crankbait's kind of going down the bass just big bass will hit it and i've had that happen to me a few times so just a little tip i've noticed that a lot of the bigger bass are going to sit towards the bottom of that and um that's going to be it i've talked a lot and um those are going to be my top five soft plastics and hard baits in may hope you guys go out there and really slam some giants i hope this actually helps you uh, i know some of you uh, watch my videos come from up north or live more in the northern states so coming down to florida you know you get an idea of what they really want and i uh, hope this helps you out you guys until next time y'all peace